Have you noticed that the Christian apologists tend to read their scriptures between the lines and then ignore the lines? It's whenever it's convenient. Yeah, well, I mean, like the, the whole thing about you know, who Satan is, for example. So, in the in uh, the Renaissance, we had uh, all of the you know, we had all the Ninja Turtles, Raphael, Michelangelo, and, and so forth. Shredder. <laughs> <laughs> all of these artists painted the temptation of Eve with. The, with the serpent depicted as a woman. Now, the cover of my book is a detail of uh, the pedestal for one of the saints on the entrance of Notre Dame Cathedral. Now, I don't know if that still exists because Notre Dame burnt down, but I was there bef the, the year before it burned down, and I got a picture of it, and, and um, all, all of these depict her as a woman, and, and the, the one in Notre Dame, this is Notre Dame, right? I mean, this is like the center of Catholicism at this point. Both... Uh, there and the ceiling of the Sistine Chapel, right, with Michelangelo depicted in every one of those Renaissance painters. She is a woman. The serpent is a woman. Is that Satan? Were we ever meant to believe that Satan was a woman? No. It's not written in the Bible who the fuck the serpent is. It only says that the serpent is a snake, and that is because the serpent was adapted from uh, the Epic of Gilgamesh, where Lilith lived in, uh, in, in the sacred garden of Inanna in the sacred tree of Hulapu, and she lived with the serpent who could not be tamed. That's where the serpent came from. But when you, when you try to interconnect the mythology with all these things that the Bible doesn't say, then you have to pretend that the serpent was Satan, and then the first time, chronologically, after this story, you, that the Satan is described as walking. Right? And God has to say, well, where were you? Well, I was walking here and walking there. But wasn't it just the case that he was cursed to crawl on his belly all the rest of his days? Now, people ignore the, thing, the reference of Job and go all the way to Revelations, all the way to the end of the book, that says that, sa that Satan was that old serpent. But it doesn't mean that old serpent, now does it? It's that other old serpent. Now, now, see, if you go to the middle of the book, we have Jesus saying that the Pharisees were the sons of Satan and that they are a den of vipers. Does he mean that they are all literally snakes and that they're literally the sons of devil? No, of course not. So when we get into Revelations, it says that old serpent, and then we forget the line right after that, that is standing on the beach. So back then, the idea of dragons having legs was common. So you know, it's not crawling on the belly all the rest of his days. It's a multi-headed fucking dragon standing. It's King Ghidorah standing on the fucking beach. That is not a serpent crawling on his belly. What the fuck is wrong with these people that they have to come up with all these justifications for folklore? You believe in a fucking fable that has no, literally, no truth in it. I'm ranting again, aren't I? It's cool. Yeah, I, 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 I can <laughs> I, I can only assume the person who's, who made Satan a woman was just some really bitter single guy, and he's like, I'll, I'll show all them. Uh, don't date me or re return my... <laughs> yeah, and, and uh, not only that, but, but when certain... The first time we mentioned Satan... Now, God may have cursed the serpent for all the rest of his days, but the first time we mentioned Satan in Job, of course, God and, and, and Satan are buddies. They're pals. They have, they're, chronologically in the story, they have never had a falling out. What's up with that? They're friends. And then they make a bet. Hey, how can I fuck over this other guy for no goddamn reason? Right? And then blame you for it. So that in, in, in the end, God says, the devil made me do it. And so the only evil, the only time that Satan kills anybody is because God made him do it as part of a, one of the conditions of their bet. I always thought it was weird how there's a big thing about how you can't have evil in heaven, and that's why hell exists. But Job has Satan just like strolling up, being like, sup, God? Which, I, and obviously Satan was somebody who worked for God in that interpretation. Now, by the way, the character of Satan comes from Hashatan, which is a Zoroastrian idea. It means the enemy, the, the adversary. Yeah, so, so in, in the, the Jewish scriptures, they only have this reference to the Satan character who is actually working for God, which doesn't make a lot of sense. But the Christians skipped over the Jewish mythology. And we know that, that, that Judaism was based more on Zoroastrianism than any prior belief. All the scholars agree on that. But the Christians reached back ahead of the Jews and skipped over what, what they didn't adapt, and they adapted this, this Satan character, Hashitan, also known as Araman, the opposer, and they put that into the Christian mythology, directly lifted from Zoroastrianism. They had the idea, which was unlike the Jews. The Jews had this belief in Sheol, right, which was the same thing that, that the Hellenists believed, that everybody that dies goes to the land of the dead to be dead. People are literally dead over there. It's like an old folks' home where everybody's asleep. So every, everybody's unconscious, and it doesn't matter whether you were good or bad. Everybody that's dead goes there. 
But then the Zoroastrian belief was, uh, and that this is, um, oh fuck, what's his name? I, I hate when he's having these senior moments where I can't remember somebody's name on the fly. But <coughs> Zarathustra is asking uh, Ahura Mazda about this. And so, so the, 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 the mythology was that the righteous man, when he dies, will ascend to the kingdom of justice and truth, ruled by, Arama, uh, ruled by Ahura Mazda. But uh, the, the, the evil man, will descend into the kingdom of the lie, ruled by Araman the opposer, which is Hashitan, which is Satan, which is the origin of the, of the devil myth. So that's where Christians get the erroneous idea that is not supported in their own scripture at all, that good and bad people will be judged accordingly. It's not, you're not judged whether you're good or bad, you're judged whether you're gullible or not. Do you believe impossible nonsense for no good reason? Yes? Okay, you can be forgiven. Did you believe impossible nonsense for no good reason? No, I needed to see evidence. Sorry, you're going to hell. That's what it is. There's no justification beyond that. If, uh, if you were, if you were a, a, a perfectly evil person, you, you'd be the most selfish, vindictive, cruel bastard. that You can be Hitler. You, you'd be the worst person in the world. But if you are like Hitler and say that everything that you do against the Jews is because of your religious belief in Christianity and your support of Christianity, well, then you're, you can be forgiven. Not guaranteed that you're going to be forgiven, but you can be forgiven. All sins can be forgiven if you but believe. But if you don't believe, then it doesn't matter how good you are because the only sin that cannot be forgiven is the sin of disbelief. And that will damn you to hell. So, gullibility is the sole criteria for redemption. Did you pay your tithe? No? Fuck you. That's it. Who was it? Jeffrey Dahmer, Ted Bundy, that converted to Christianity? Isn't that Dahmer convenient? Prison. One of them. So he, so. Uh, 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 didn't say the magic word. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you go to prison, you convert to Christianity. Isn't that convenient? That now suddenly you are embraced by your newly found brethren. And it doesn't matter what horrible, evil atrocities you've committed before that. Hell, they'll, they'll pay you to go on the speaking circuit and, sa and share your grand story to... Exactly. Uh, Whatever reinforces the make-believe. Yeah. Okay. One more. <laughs> What's that? Did Donner do a cookbook from what goes, what goes with good with a human liver? Or, oh, God. That would actually be funny as fuck. I, I, I don't strike him as being that picky. No, I don't. I don't imagine that Dahmer has any intelligence at all. But I'm, I'm thinking that, that, that you know, if I were in this this six sadist situation, that maybe writing a cookbook from prison, <laughs> this is gonna have a cult following in that. Yeah, yeah. That, that, that 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 would take some balls. Any of the recipes like, involved? He had some in his freezer. Do any of your recipes involve fava beans? <laughs> Yeah. Has anybody had long pork in this room? Yeah. Has anyone actually had fava beans with human flesh? And I saw this movie once that I dearly loved that could, because Lemmy was one of the stars in it. But anyway, I, I saw this movie oh, that I dearly loved. With this old couple are having uh, having dinner in this restaurant, and the restaurant is secretly serving human flesh. <gasps> Gasp. And the old couple doesn't know that they're, you know, but they're they're Hotel they're. Hell. They're, no, it's called Eat the Rich. Oh. And they're, they're having dinner, and, it, and the, the husband says to the wife, says, Hey, this tastes rather like human flesh. And the wife says, Yes, it does. <laughs> <laughs> How the <laughs> fuck do you know? <laughs> a little gamey. <laughs> okay, what, one, one more of these, and then, and then we'll yeah. go. Um, so we were, we were talking about the feeding of the 5,000 before, right? And there was a huge crowd of people following Jesus. And uh, Mark says that they were... Uh, there are many coming and going, and they had no leisure even to eat, hence the need for the loaves and fishes. But why were there so many crowds following Jesus? Especially when he's not mentioned by anybody ever. Well, we get, we get the vague reference that there were many witnesses mm -hmm. to, what were they, many, there were many witnesses to undead saints, you know, doing the thriller in downtown Judea, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's, there were many witnesses. None that could be found, none that could corroborate. There's not a single mention of history. Even people who believe Jesus existed admit that, that Jesus is not mentioned by anybody that would have, should have, heard of him in that time. Mm -hmm. Nami. No. Zip. Nothing. Isn't he supposed to 
supposed to be known throughout the world? Too? Yeah, we can verify that, that Pontius Pilate existed, but yeah, I, I'm pretty sure that even the believers understand, or at least a few of them, maybe not the guy I talked to last night, but at least a few of them realize that if we had a time machine where you could go back and observe, you know, like with a drone camera, you know, an imperceptible drone, cam drone camera going back in time just to review history. You're not changing history, you're just watching history. You can, you can see what happened, you can hear what happened, you would never find Jesus. Even if you understood Aramaic, you would never find Jesus. You would find three or four guys that could, at least three, that, that, could, that could qualify as contributing a part of the story, but you'd never find the one guy who contributed to the whole story. That doesn't exist. You'd never find that guy. And of course you would never find the flood. Sodom and Gomorrah, that, that you, would, you would, might be able to find a city that was destroyed by whatever means. You might, it might even be one of those cities that they're talking about, or both of them with the volcanic eruption or something along those lines. Yeah, but you'll never find the pillar of salt, right? And of all the ridiculous things that people believe, the guy who absconds into a cave after his wife is conveniently eliminated from the equation by being turned into a pillar of salt, and he gets drunk because that's what you do, mm -hmm. and then his daughters molest him. Now, what, what is more likely? That the daughters really thought that they had to get their father drunk enough to make them pregnant? Or the guy who's already drunk is making up the excuses for how they seduced him? Yeah. What's more likely here? The fact that anybody believes that story, if you're stupid enough to believe that story, well then of course you believe that a man lived inside a fish for three fucking days, you stooge. So, crowds following Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> but this is all gone already, so I'm just going to say my thing because I have a piece of paper with words on it and I'm going to read them, goddammit. <laughs> okay. So, so I have a feeling I've gone off the rails at some point. <laughs> this was shot half an hour ago, but that's fine. Um, so, so they're trying to make a case that you know it's some great mystery why there are these crowds following Jesus, right? Even though the same book is talking about how there are so many people following Jesus, they need to lower people through the ceiling of a house in order for him to get his hands on them to heal them, right? So, like this is some big mystery that needs to be explained by another book. Yeah, and, and let's let's understand. He's doing hail. <laughs> that's, that's, that's literally what he's doing. It's that's it. That, he's a faith healer. He's the same exact fraud that we still have today. He somehow had a white suit. I don't know how he got it. That wasn't even a thing. <laughs> yeah, and 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 I'm sure that he sent prayer offerings and you know vials of holy water. And if you and if you send in your your monetary gift, you know, I'll put my hand over the hand the hand imprint of the letter and I'll pray for you. You know, bullshit. Take out the check, check the rest of the trash. That's that's the way faith healers have always been, and that's and that's what people believe in now. They're believing in the Bobby Tilton of two thousand years ago. It's Sunday, where's my money, bitches? Yes. Let's say you want to worship Jesus with five hundred dollars. Let's say you want to worship Jesus with a thousand dollars. All I'm asking is a vow of faith. As surely as I'm speaking by the Spirit of God, that is a word for a person right now. That is God penetrating your heart. It's burning on the inside of you, and you need to make a vow of faith of a thousand dollars. Oh, Bob, couldn't you say twenty-five? No. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so. Bobby Tilton. Bobby Tilton was referenced. Bobby Tilton was referenced in a Motorhead song called "Bad Religion." We, they actually have a soundbite of Bobby Tilton go, I'm talking about your money. <laughs> He's reduced to a tiny little um, hotel uh, conference room now in L.A. Well, L.A.? I thought he was in Florida. Convicted of fraud. I think the last I heard he was in L.A. He does an internet thing. So. I think the uh, most hilarious thing I've ever seen on the internet was the farting, farting creature. creature thing. That's yeah. what I was associated Did with. You, you guys lived in Dallas <laughs> when he was on the air, right? Yeah. Do you remember when he was brought up on charges? For tax evasion? Yeah. So he's, he's trying to say, because John says that the feeling of the 5,000 took place over Passover, right? So they're trying to say, oh, these are all the crowds from Passover that came to see Jesus. And like, what is Passover? 
Fuck, you need God who is omnipotent and omniscient and knows everything. Pastor, president, you know, he needs somebody to smear lamb's blood on the fucking door to know which kid to kill? Really? Yeah. Who the fuck could believe? How can anybody, not much less most of the planet, how could anybody be so stupid as to believe that the guy who needs the lamb's blood on the door to figure out which kid to kill is omniscient? What if he used the wrong God blood? Damn. Like, oh, all I have is goat are doing it. What? <laughs> but we know that none of that really happened, right? None mm -hmm. of that. Oh, yeah. There was no exodus. There was no. There, there was never a point where the city of Ramses had more Hebrews in it than the entire country of Egypt did. At had people so, uh, at that time. So, right? so we know that none of that happened. But but what if what if an Egyptian? What if, let's say that it did, and an Egyptian smears blood. Well, God, God, see. Well, there's lamb's blood in this one, so I'm not going to kill their kid. Yeah. Well, and the, and the slavery of, of Exodus is favoritism toward that population because they endorse the treatment of certain slaves in one part of the Bible and then another part. Yeah, of the slavery. Like, oh, we have to free them all because they're suffering. And, and slavery like, was not criminalized. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Period. So we still had slavery endorsed by Jesus so after the fact. Because they're the chosen people, let's get them out of slavery because now yeah. it's immoral. But uh, oh, <laughs> no, no, it it's God. only immoral for them. Yeah. That was God softening slavery yeah. so that he could. Like, <laughs> yeah. so, he, so later he could tell yeah. everybody it was. Wrong. Yeah, and then yeah. Jesus, yeah. So and then Jesus has people. to come in line and says, you know, slaves, stay in line with your masters and even keep doing what. Even the cruel yeah. ones. Yep. It's like, hey, don't don't beat them so they die right away. Let, let's give them a couple days. <laughs> and then, uh, and then they like to, that, that, that'll be better. And yeah. They, and then they like to say that Philemon was, you know, the Bible's, um, you know, mixing of of slavery. Like, no. That was just Paul again. not wanting okay, his slave friend picture. to be a slave anymore. <laughs> if your God was moral, he would have made the message clear enough to where the amount of people who were enslaved in world history by ju justified by the Bible would not have been enslaved because you would have had a much more moral message and a clear message to begin with. Yeah, your God. Seriously. Just say don't let own people as property. You're yeah. God. You know what you guys need to do? Yeah, now not. Just simple. make a proclamation. Yeah. Can I make a suggestion for this show? You guys need to rent a facility where you can have an actual preacher come in and defend their bullshit. We do you know, all the time. Where, where do you do that? Believers in. My, usually my house, but you've you've been on remember, shows so we have you believers. You were on a six-man roundtable where you destroyed them on on uh, Job. Remember that? And Daniel. Daniel got. Yeah, I do. I do remember that. But I mean, I mean, bring in different preachers, you know, kind of regularly. We do live shows too. Okay. Yeah. I have a question. Yeah. If I may. We have a question from the audience of five thousand here. Um, yeah. Anyone else? You got to line up at the mic. No, no. <laughs> I understand that the Quran and the Bible are 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 completely uh, wrong and contradictory and everything. Have you read the Quran? know that the American version of a religion has got to get it right. The Mormon Bible has got to be right. Is that correct? Well, that's what I was heard. That's what I was always told when I was a kid growing up in a Mormon family. That somehow it didn't matter if the foundations of the Mormon religion being the Bible. It didn't matter if the foundation was crap. Because the Book of Mormon is somehow correct even if the Bible's complete horseshit. I don't know how that's justified, but I was always told that having a basis in science, things we can prove to be true, was shifting sand. And that I was supposed to put my basis on authoritarian scripture that was never going to be changed. But if that's the case, then why is the Book of Mormon still valid even when the Bible collapses beneath it? What the fuck holds the Book of Mormon up? And let's, let's just forget that this was written by a guy who had already been convicted of fraud for for seeing stones and all like this. But that already happened. But nobody in my family will accept that. Not that anybody outside of my mother is any in, in any ways a decent Mormon anyway. Everybody in my family are are, are drug addicted, alcoholic, fornicating convicts who who just say that they're better than me because they're Christian. And have never cracked open a Bible and don't know what a creed is, but they're better than me because they're religion, their faith. Mormons that and Trump. Mormons believe that they're Christians? Yes. Absolutely yes. It's the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. Do Christians believe Mormons are nope. Christians? No. Nope. That depends on which Christian you ask, but most of the time they want to exclude Mormons and, and Jehovah's Catholic. Witnesses and Catholics. But, but the interesting thing is, the most often that I hear that it's not real Christians is Catholics. 
Most often I hear that Catholics are Mary worshiping pagans. But if the Christians dismiss the Catholics as being true Christian, then Christianity is no longer the dominant religion. Now we already have Christians saying that Christianity isn't a religion, it's a philosophy. It's a relationship. If you use philosophy as a justification of your argument, you're wrong. Okay, so that, that just make that a law. So th well, these people want to argue that that, that that Christianity is the dominant religion on the planet, but it's not a religion. How can it be a dominant religion if it's not a religion? And if Catholicism is not Christianity, then Christianity, if we're only talking about Protestant Christianity, becomes the fourth largest religion in the world, not the second. Because Islam becomes the world dominant religion after that, followed by Hinduism, followed by Hinduism. There are more Hindus than there are Catholics. And then, and, and then you get Catholics. The, the Catholics are the third largest religion, and then Protestant Christianity. But we're talking about religious believers, so we're not talking about reason or rationality. Whatever's convenient. As arrogant as their scholarship wants to pretend to be. So, I'll be honest, I have no idea what this segment was supposed to be about. <laughs> uh, I, I, I think we started sharing like banana bread recipes or something like that. And, and just went off from there. Uh, but Aaron, thank you for thank you for joining us. It's always good having you on. The well, show. thank you very much. I had fun anyway. Yeah, and we'll see you all next time on Atheist Edge.